basics of student accommodation investing. So the first thing is, and I'm sure if you've been on a couple of our webinars, this is a slide that's been repeated many times, and it's really important to remember that we're always looking for cash flow positive from day one. Now, what does that mean, right? You've got cash flow positive and you've got cash flow negative. Cash flow positive is when your income exceeds your expenses and you're left with a profit every month. Now, in property, your income can be rent, parking, you can maybe sell advertising space or maybe storage. Your expenses are your levies, your bonds, your rates and taxes, your provisions, etc. And then your profit is obviously your cash flow. If you're in a negative cash flow position, it means that the rent that you're charging is less than your monthly expenses, meaning you're losing money every month and therefore you're buying a liability, not an asset. Okay, so the key, key thing when you're looking at any rental opportunity, especially a student accommodation, is that it has to be cash flow positive. Okay. So let me show you an example. Here is a um, six bedroom house for sale in Stellenbosch, um, Western Cape. So the first thing that I'm looking at here is when I'm, uh, when I'm looking at this deal is I want to make sure that it's, it's ready for student accommodation. Now these pictures I, I chose specifically on, on the first, on the left screen here, what you can see is this, this house is coming fully furnished. Okay, you've got your desk, you've got your chair, you've got your bed, and you've got your lampshade, and then you've probably got a built-in cupboard. That's all that a student needs. Right, a student's going to come with their bags, with their clothes, with their linen, and they just want a place that looks exactly like this. So what, what this is telling me is that the previous owner of this house is already catering to students. So I'm buying the business that's already been built for student accommodation, which is great. On the top right here, I can see there's a pool and there's a nice outside area. Now, one thing that students do love, I'm sure you know this, is they love to party. They love a little entertainment area. So if I want to try and attract you know, students to my house as opposed to the house next door, and I can show them a fully functioning pool with a braai area, it might persuade them. I obviously want to see as well that there's a common area, a kitchen area. What I like here is there's two sinks. You know, that tells me that multiple people can be in this kitchen at the same time. And then the last picture that interested me while looking at this property on, on Property 24 is that there's ample parking space and it looks relatively secure. Okay, so when you're looking at student accommodation, those are some of the questions you want to be looking at. Is it safe? Is it close to university? Does it come with all the finishes and features? Can multiple people stay here? Can I attract people into my property? Okay, now once you've got a property that makes a little bit of sense, you can use NASFAS, which is the National Student Funding Association of South Africa, I think. I probably butchered that. I'm not exactly sure what that acronym stands for, but it is a government initiative that helps fund people into student accommodation. So they fund students accommodation, they fund their purchases of books, they fund a whole bunch of stuff. Now what NASA says is that if you're able to accommodate and follow their guidelines on student housing, they will pay 3,250 per student per month. Okay, so that's kind of the going rate. If you get global or international students or if you go private, you can probably get a lot more. But sort of your bare minimum per bed, uh, when you follow the guidelines that NASFAS expects, you can rent out for 3250 Okay, so using those numbers or using that basis of 3250 per student, I know that when I repurpose this property and I put the amount of students that I know I can fit onto this property, I can rent this out for 39000 rent okay my expenses which includes a bond repayment it includes rates and taxes insurance water and electricity maintenance management and vacancies I'm walking away with a monthly cash flow or monthly profit of 7100 rent okay so let's quickly unpack each one of these line items in a little bit more detail so the first one is your bond repayment so your bond repayment is obviously you get a loan from the bank or from an investor. Let's say you get 90% loan to value at a 7% interest rate over 20 years. You can plug those things into the My Property app or into any kind of bond calculator and it will give you your monthly repayment. Rates and taxes is pretty explanatory and insurance. You obviously want to insure the building and maybe some of the contents inside the building. Water and electricity, I tend to budget about 150 to 200 Rand per person per month for water and electricity. 
Um, when a student pays their rent, they tend to expect that that payment covers everything, including water and electricity. Now you might have prepaid electricity or prepaid water, which then basically means that the students among themselves must you know, collect money every month and pay off the prepaid electricity. Uh, if you can get prepaid electricity, it always helps because that variable cost um, obviously affects your cash flow. You know, some months you, in the winter months, they use heaters and electric blankets and then your, your expenses are so high that your re revenue no longer covers it and you're not in a cash flow positive position anymore. Maintenance, you can see here that I've budgeted more than 10% of my rent to go to maintenance because students tend to not see this as a house or a home, but they see it rather as their personal party zone. You know, I, the many times I've had to replace carpets because of a hubbly coal stain or cigarette marks or whatever it may be. Um, so you want to be able to budget quite a lot of your monthly revenue and allocate it to maintenance. Uh, Sorry for the background noise, there's some, uh, some motorbikers outside. Um, so you want to be able to allocate quite a lot of your monthly budget towards maintenance because students do require quite a lot of renovations to keep going. What, one thing I will also recommend is always have some sort of cleaning service. Have someone come in once a week to do a full clean of the house because it's usually cheaper to pay for a weekly service than to pay for a yearly service. Um, because the yearly service at the end of the year, there's so much broken that it ends up costing you quite a bit. Whereas on a month, on a weekly basis, you can keep the place relatively clean. Management, you know, obviously we want to be able to buy back our time. So we charge, uh, we, we get charged by a managing agent to manage the property and then vacancies, right? So oftentimes students will only rent for 10 or maybe 11 months of the year. The other month being December, they're usually on holiday and they don't tend to always pay or need accommodation. So I always just take about 5,000 off of the, the, the 40,000 I'll take away and I'll put that as a budget so that when I don't get paid in December, I've got a bit of savings to be able to cover all my expenses. Are you tired of having more month at the end of your money? It's time to venture into property investing. And although it may seem scary, don't worry. We've created tons of resources to help you get started. From tools that help you analyze deals to online training courses to one-on-one -on -one specialized coaching. Click the link in the comments below and get started today.